Stuff on page 14. Discussing is the meat, is fish, is raw fish considered to be. Sorry, 18. Is raw fish considered to be mukte or not? And we say raw fish is nowadays not mukte. Originally, in the days of Hazali, it was mukte. Nowadays, not mukte. Ah, why is it not? Uh, why is it not even in the days of Hazal not mukte? Because it was fit for the animals. The dogs could have eaten it. So any food, any food that the dog could have eaten, it should be okay because it's uh, edible for the dog. What we learn? Because not designated for the dog. Okay? And then we said that wheat, raw wheat, on Shabbat, it's not mukseh because it's edible. However, raw barley is mukseh because people cannot eat raw barley. Even in Paras, they didn't eat raw barley. They can only eat raw wheat. Okay? Now we're going to Amud Yutet. Haim Trufot, we spoke about Trufot yesterday, and we spoke, said that medications on Shabbat, it's not mukseh. What's the reason, Meir? Because it's fit for? Uh, not bad, not bed critical ridden. sick, bedridden, bedridden people. They need medication. Though since it could have been raui, fit for this type of people, it's not uh, mukt on Shabbat. That's why, let's say you have a uh, antibiotic in your house, in your shelf somewhere. You have antibiotic. Is this mukt or no? No. What do we say? No mukt. Clear? To move that. Huh? To move that antibiotic. To move antibiotic. Can you move it? You have pills of antibiotic. Can you move that on, them on Shabbat or no? Says Allah, you're allowed to move them because they are not muktzen. What's the reason? Because it fits for somebody. And where do we find the concept is when it fits for something, for somebody, for somebody, I should say, not for something, for somebody, it's fine. We found it from the laws of Yeruv Tavshili. Remember? We said that on Friday, Yom Tov, you're not allowed to cook for Shabbat. And Yom Tov, Machin Le Shabbat, Asu. So why are we allowing people to cook on Yom Tov on Shabbat for Shabbat? Because we did Yom Tov Shilin. But how Yom Tov Shilin will save the problem? If to cook from Yom Tov to Shabbat, it's a Torah prohibition. How Yom Tov Shilin, which is a rabbinical mitzvah, remove Torah prohibition? There's all of it. And what we said? We said because it's not a Torah prohibition. Whenever you made it early enough, when you're making it early enough in the morning, so people could still eat it. Guests might come to eat it today. So if guests could have come eat it today, it's already safek doraita, not 100% doraita. In safek doraita, you only go strict with rabbanan. So comes the roof of shilin, the rabbanan removes the problem of safek doraita, which is only with rabbanan. Therefore, it's allowed. What's the concept we take out of there? That you see that something that for you, you're not gonna eat it now. You make cook the osvo, you cook the gondi for tomorrow for Shabbat. You don't want to eat it right now on Yom Tov. But since it could have been eaten on the Yom Tov, by who? By other people, not by you. You don't want to eat it today. It's not considered be mukse. So too is the other medications. Is this clear? Okay, very good. We are on uh, point two. Ha'im Trufa. Who wants to read? Zakeno, you want to read 19? 19, two. How? Are you following? Medication. The qu- you're in the questions, right? Yeah. yeah. Is someone else allowed to handle them? Yeah. The answer is, even medications that are for rare illnesses are not upset. Yeah. So even though it's very far, who's going to have this medication? Only this type of person. Not a common thing. Nevertheless, it's not upset. Can you say medication uh, also edible? Medication for edible for who, Yaakov? For sickness. For uh, edible. How, what sick people? Bedridden? Not bedridden. If it's not bedridden, who's going to eat it? You know, I'm saying you don't have to be bedridden. Nobody eats medication. It's, uh, it's not edible. Right, it's not an edible thing. It's not food. Okay? Number three. Uh, you, you read yet. Okay, number three. Madhu Adava. Quickly, let's go. Food made for one person only, and that person is Separating 
Okay, so hello. What's the difference between food meant for, for, for the person or for the dog? For example, if it is for the dog, so in the case that she is not in the city. If it is not in the city... The dog is he or she? He slash she. Yeah, the dog gets he or she? Do, dogs they eat. No? If it is not in the city. No? If oh. it's not in the city, right? Okay. It's according to our days. Okay. Okay, let's put a mark over here as a question to look for. Okay, continuing. If it is not in the city. So if the dog is not in the city, there is no dog. Bones, Muktze be Shabbat or no? Huh? No. You finish the bones of your chicken. You put it on the table. You can move it after or no? No. Be Shabbat. Not it's not Muktze because you could feed it. The dogs do this. What if you don't have any dogs to feed? Well, some people eat bone marrow. Uh, right. But let's say you don't have those people, neither the dogs to eat this. We go by my chance. This uh, food. These bones. Are they Muktze or no? Says Alakha because there is a dog. Somewhere, not next to you, not your neighbor's dog, not across the street dog. Somewhere there is a dog that will eat it. It's fit to eat, that's it. Somewhere in the world, somewhere in the city. Somewhere in the world. It says even if so it's, it's not in the city. The bone marrow is pretty good enough even for people. Somewhere somebody will eat the bone marrow. Yeah, in the hell, yeah. So it's even better, you see. Yeah, yeah. And we say we don't go by the majority, even if no a little group of people. Yeah, mate. But not every bone has been bone marrow. Chicken, chicken, uh, in general, other bones. I see. Okay, continuing. Uh, Next. The answer is even if there is no, no, no coin in the city, a Telemoa food is not Mukse. No coin in the city. Telemoim, Rabotai. No coin in the city. Yeah. Continuing. Since it's fit for a person, it's not Mukse. Ah, yeah, so that's the chiluk. The difference, there is a difference between there is a difference between a person versus an animal. If it is a person, then even if it's outside the, in the city, it's fine. If it is an animal, that's only if he in the city. And what's the reason, mate? Why we treat the dog's animal different than the human being's animal uh, food? The dog's food different than the human being's food? Because they can get their food and dogs. Huh? No, no. Let's see why. They can come to you. Yeah, the kind of a hope if you come here to give him. It's all about the chayim. What's the difference between the food meant for the person? Ah, so the difference we answer that it's supposed to be for the person, even if it's not in the city. If it is for an animal, it must be in the city. Okay? What's the difference? Uh, whatever I remember from my memory is uh, human being is more important. So, huh? Hashivut. So since it's edible for a human being, it's even if it's not in the city, like the Tuma for the Kohen. Since even though he is not in the city, it's considered to be Davar Hashuv. Important thing. And since it's Davar Hashuv, even if the Kohen is not in the city, it's not Mukze. But if it's not Davar Hashuv, like in dog's food, bones, then the dog is supposed to be in the city. Let's say you're going to have a city that abandoned dogs. No dogs in the city. The bones will be mukta or no? Yes. Is there such a city in the world if that gonna, abandoned dogs? No. If we're going to use the bone marrow, as we said, then we go by the people. Uh, and then it will not be mukta. I hear, yeah, yeah, if it's if bones, that has bone marrow. If it's not for the dogs, it's cats. If it's not cats, it's raccoons. Like, someone's going to eat it. Ah, uh, yeah? yeah? Cats also eat the bones? bones yeah. Chicken bones? Yeah. I, think. I don't know. I think they lick around. I don't know if they... Oh, I don't okay, think I mean, they if, if it's uh, lick around, it's also fine. The raccoons it's are going to eat it. Uh, why? We said the, the 
hard bones, אפילו שלא, הכלב מלקק את זה, אבל he's not eating it. Maybe he's talking, if he'll leak it in a chinami, maybe he'll be fine. I'll give you a proof. I'll give you a proof. A person squeezed lemon on Shabbat, on the salat. You allowed or no? Yes. Huh? Sure. Mr. Benjamin, what do you say? Mutar or no? Yes. Ah, Yonatan. Yeah, yeah, I get confused. Yonatan, are you allowed to squeeze lemon on Shabbat, on salat? What we say aloud? Now, aloud, Liran, aloud. So, schita on top of food, muta. Let's say I have a tequila and I want to put a little. Lemon, you're allowed, even on tequila. Lemon. Squeeze. Squeeze, kaha. I heard it's baalets, then khayim, roast in the. Baalacha, muta. אבל לא אורנג' או אשכולית או דברים אחרים, רק לימון. למון, למון. למון, רק למון. למון אפשר on drinks and אפשר on food. Other things you're not allowed on drinks, but you're allowed on food. So on salat you're allowed to squeeze whatever you want. Oranges, lemons, grapes. Al osvo. Al osvo, but not on the pot. On the langri. Yeah. On, on your plate. But on the pot there'll be a problem of cooking. Squeeze grapes on food. On food, you can squeeze you whatever you want. Grapes. Whoever Mahmir is not Rabbi Yosef. Followed other opinions. Shulchan Aruch said aloud, Rabbi Yosef also said aloud. Now, after a person squeezed the lemon on top of the salad, what will happen to the seeds? Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. They'll fall off, Mahon. Can you allow me to pick up the seeds out of there, or is the problem Mukti? Amen, what do you say? Allowed? We have shakol? Birshut morai verabotai Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shehakol nihiyah bidvaro What do we pass in? Muta, why? Says the poskim You're allowed to take out the seeds out. If you're going to suck on the seeds out of it, all the juice, the sour juice out of it, muta. What do we see? The same thing is for the bones then. No? If you don't, there's a question of Borer. But uh, let's say you, you will lick on them, suck on them, so then you said didn't separate only garbage. You separate something edible with it. You're gonna lick it now. So this emphasis, this shows that something that has a layer, bones that has a layer of some taste of it on, on the bones, fat, whatever it is. So that taste, it's still got for the dog. It's raw for a person too. Yeah, if a person will lick on it, yeah, the dry bones. Hagai John, welcome back. Have fun. Agomel. Let's go, Derek. Amen. Amen, go. The Baruch Hashem Parsi, Lavi Hashem, what are you doing? Okay. Thank <laughs> 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 So now, uh, so the bones that the, the dogs, even if it's a hard bone, will have that tasty layer on it that people will steal or animals will steal. Lick on it. So since it's edible for people, for dogs, it will not be mukte. Mm -hmm. So we must say that whenever the poskim said that it is mukte, when right. it's not edible for the dog, that's only whenever it is 
dried 100%. There's no taste to it whatsoever. Add some mud and by him time. That's what Gemara says. To strengthen the teeth, they give bones to to, to uh, puppies. To they, children? No, other puppies. To puppies, the dogs. Uh, dogs, yeah. No. To strengthen their teeth, they're using it. Uh, Kazakim. Yeah. They which bones? They, they even eyes. buy it in stores, like oh. specially just to to chew on it. About what? So. How strong they are? Talking? Are you talking about the Oshpocha bones? Yeah. The cow bones? He will sit for hours, not for eating, just for the fact that he's uh, strengthening his. Uh, uh, they say they strengthen the, the teeth. So, what type of bones? So, they, even even if it's not for eating, maybe it will be for that sake. The, the, and the, you want it? Uh, yeah. Interesting. There is a purpose, there is a usage. Okay, continuing. Number 22, Bechavot, Zakino, read. Uh, just to pronounce your last name the right, Zaki or Zake? Zaki, good, okay. Is it nevertheless dead animal who said? No. So you went outside on the street on Shabbat and you saw dead animal in front of your backyard or in front of your front yard. Huh? Of the mukta. Animal is mukta, we said. What if it's dead animal? Squirrel. Yeah. Kelev is mukta if you to pick it up. You can touch him, but you cannot pick him up the Shabbat. Right, Lachutz no problem. But pick him up will be a problem mukta. Okay, so now what if it's dead animal? Like a dead scroll or stuff like that? So let's see the answer. Okay. I mean, other animals eat live other animals also, so it's not mukta. Mm -hmm. uh, Remember, designated or no? Yeah, yeah. If you designate, you're not gonna designate a cow, the dog for the lion to eat it. If you designated the, the chicken to to be a, like a toy, it's okay to to play with. <laughs> to, oh, that's a good question. After I have an animal that is mukta. What's considered to be a designation that I can remove the Mukta status out of it? The post can debate about uh, playing. Is playing considered to be enough of a reason to approve the Mukta laws or no? What's playing? Playing. Mishak. Uh, to play. A few, yeah. Yeah, a few, few, few occasions tonight. A few occasions tonight, yes. This week is going to be a few occasions. Also, people are in the, right now it's between school and camp. People have nothing to do at home, they go vacation. It's oily mi itzri, oily mi Yeah, they need to keep the market of the vacations. It's insane. Two and a half months almost, right? It's crazy. In months, it's not like that. They only give like 20 days. Three weeks. It's three weeks, that's it. Three wow. weeks, eh? Okay, since a is fit for an animal or a goy, it's not mukte. So goy can eat nevela. Let's say you have a dead dog. You have Chinese people. Bahazu, Habibi, Todaraba, Nadikates. Dead meat of dog, they'll eat, no problem. What were you saying about playing with the dog? You better say something. Uh, playing is the, uh, is the, when I play with the dog, sorry, when I, um, uh, the dog is mukte, if I, what's the need will consider to remove the dog status out of it, the any mukte status out of it. So you will need a, a, a serious need to remove the mukte problem. Playing is not a serious need. It's playing. That's how. That's how the it's machlok between the rosh and the ovzah. We're gonna see it later on. The Rabbi Yosef says, "What if a person has a tuki that is singing, the bird that he sings? Is it, can I pick it up a Shabbat or no? I bought it for it to sing. I want to show off to the, my friends, to my cousin, brother, brother, the beautiful song that he gives." A Muqtab Shabbat to take it out of the cage and, if you, if you and uh, put it on my finger. No, huh? If you designate it before, it's okay. No, it says no. It says, Allah, Asu. 
ראש סז אסור, אור זרוע סז מותר. סז מרן, סינס דה ראש, is one of the pillars of הלכה. We're gonna give him the כבוד to pass him like him. Like what? That is אסור. To make, to remove, to move a bird that is singing. Even though he has a purpose, it's singing. It's not just an animal. It's considered to be fish. Fish, a person bought fish, beautiful. He wants to take him out for Shabbat with another aquarium, a small one, and put it on the table in front of the people to show how beautiful fish he is. Huh? It's, it's in the water. It's in water. It's not about to capture. Uh, that's maybe another question. <laughs> what about Mukze? Mukze? Yeah, I'll tell you more practical. I remember on Rosh Hashanah, there's Misal Duta Shlich, Nahon. It's written that it's the best. It's Duta Shlich. Ah, Mirjun. So the Persians are going to take over here, I think. <laughs> We're going to start the show in Persian. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, a little bit. I can do a little bit. <laughs> so, if a person has right now tashlich, the best way to do tashlich is to have fish in the place that you are sewing tashlich. You know that? Sewing yeah. tashlich. Whenever you do tashlich, the best place to do tashlich is in place there is fish. fish. No, no, no. So you have fish. So one time. The one guy hears that, he brings to Beta Knesset, I remember that's Minyan. They brought aquarium, he said, Rabbi, I have a surprise for you. Ma, he brought aquarium with fish for Shabbat. At Rosh Hana. We did Tashlich. Can you do move it down or no? It's a beautiful fish. He has a use for it, yeah. Is that considered to be a use that will remove the muktzalos or no? Says Alachano. It remains muktzal. Can you tell the goy to move it? Yeah, Shmuel. Huh? Not only that, also the goy can rely on the zawa. That's why it's not muktzal. I think the Ashkenazi passing like the orzo rule. Is that true? I don't know. I don't remember Ramad disagreed with him. We went to a big Tamit Chacham, he said, I was like, why are the people touching it is in Shabbat? Touching what? Tuki. Not Tuki. Bird. Not a bird, it's like air. Tabas. Yeah, something like that. Nice bird, you know? No, but kids too. Anyways, they were touching, I was like, maybe it's Muktzah. Touching is no problem. Touching it. It's not a Muktzah question. Picking up, it's a Muktzah question. He was saying is that Rebbe Mukhtar is my machlok, he said. Oh, machlok, those are all in the rush, but Maran passing like. You can touch the dog, no problem. You can touch the dog, no problem. But you cannot pick up the dog. When I was in Colorado, one guy told me, on your way, if you see any dead deer, give me a call. Like hit by a car or something. He said, he pick it up and... Shashlik. Uh, Menatah hotel in Tahar, some auto at home in the deep freeze, and he has uh, 500 pounds. So why we, we need to rely on Mukhan Laklavim, Nevela, and all of them? Goy, Ochel Nevela. So it's proper to some people. So what do you want to say, therefore? We said if it's for a Goy also. Huh? For a Goy? Ah, no, ah, yeah, man, or person. dog, oh, okay. or Goy. Katur. Oh, Okay, number two. <coughs> but how is Zakino read? Dog and goy equals together. No, but the Gemara, I'm not dafka klavim. They're both allowed to eat it. Why the Gemara says dafka klavim and the Gemara didn't mention also that goy can? I don't know. They are written goy also. Okay, number two. But how? Would... For instance, they wake up in the morning and see a dead chicken in the in, in the yard, and there is another animal who can eat it on the other side of the city. So shouldn't it be okay to move it? Okay, let's see number two. As, as long as it, as it is fit for an animal in the city, there is no except problem. An example is a dog that eats the dead animal, so it's okay. Or Lithium says, says only if the animal is close. Rabbi Ovadia says if it is inside the city, it's fine. So, Lithium, what does he hold? 
It says only if the animal is close, it's within your reach. You, you're the neighbor across the street. But if you have a, no dogs in Jamaica State. The only dog there is by Forest Hills. What are the chances you're gonna go on Shabbat to feed these bones to a dog in Forest Hills? To a Brit Milah people don't go, so I'm sorry it's too far to say. <laughs> to feed dogs with the bones that you have left over, definitely not gonna do so. So so is all it's on, therefore, not allowed to move those bones. But there is dog, there is dog in forest hills, right? Not here. The eunuch cannot do that. <coughs> However, Ravadi Yosef says, since there is a dog in Queens, you're good. Not only in Jamaica State, you have a dog in Queens, in the whole city. Mutar. No mukta. Bones. The bones. Another mukta. With meat on it or not? Just bones. Just bones. Because the dog will eat it even if it is just bone. Ay Yedidia. Yedidia. The friend of Hashem. It's not only my friend, also Hashem's friend. Okay? מה קורה? יש לך שם קפה, צ'אי, מסאז' למטה. So, de- so therefore you want to be Muktzeb because when a it was. Yeah. yeah, we don't say that. We'll see soon. Okay, continuing. Read the keynote. Do we need to have an owner for this dog? This dog is in the city. This is to make a level up. This is to make a level up permissible. Rabbi Elisha says only if the dog has a Jewish owner, there is an obligation to feed it. You can come and act as his, as, 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 you can act as his messenger, even without his consent to feed the animal. But if it, if it is a stray dog, that is not allowed. Yes, it's not allowed. However. However, Rabbi Wadia says that the Shulchan Aruch says to put food in the front of the birds from feet at a hand length away is fine to do so, too, because this is, because there is no fear that you will catch them. And by the way, we learned from here that even even though the birds and bees are all ownerless, it is still allowed to give even to a street dog. Here? What does street mean? Street. Street, street dog. Street dog. Fancy language, uh, stray dog. I don't know why, but that's English. The, the Even for street, they need to say two little ways. Straight dog? Straight dog. It's, it's straight. <laughs> no, it's straight away, but it's uh, away or something. Or or straight. Or no, straight. No, no. straight. <laughs> straight dog. Okay. <laughs> 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 There's going to be a day. There's going to be a day. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what did it say? Rabbi Liashif said, if you want to feed a dog on Shabbat, you must have an owner. No owner, no food. Now what Yosef says, it's not true. Even if it is not owner, by, there is no owner, you still allowed to fit the dogs on the street. What, and what, would, what else do we learn about this? It says, because the whole problem of feeding an animal on Shabbat, you know on Shabbat you cannot feed an animal. If you want to take a tour to the zoo on Shabbat, you will not be allowed to feed the animal from your hands directly. You can put it and they'll eat it. How far are you supposed to put it away from the animal? Huh? So you cannot catch him. The length of your arm. So breadcrumbs we can. Maybe your this your uh, yours is gonna be further. <laughs> but and uh, it's gonna be closer. That's the the length. That you have to put the foot. If the dog is there. You can put the foot here. As long as your arm is between the dog and the food. That's the minimum length that you need. You could be further than that. And the reason is because if you're gonna put it too close, you're gonna like it up, you're gonna catch it. And catching on Shabbat is so from the Torah.
catch on Shabbat, asur What do you mean catching? Trapping. Birds is something that a person like a, may like it and take it, but a street a stray dog, it can be very dangerous. Yeah. Who will just maybe seek, maybe gonna attack? Yeah, yeah. Send me the question, please. Also, the previous That's question. What was the previous do. question? Just... Yeah, with the leak, with the leaking on the bones. The I want to add it to another chuba that I wrote. Bread, bread crumbs we can throw for the birds. That's why whenever it comes to Shabbat Shira, right? That people go and uh, throw bread to the animals. So some rabbi said it's asur. Why? You're feeding animals with Shabbat? No, it's asur to feed animals with Shabbat. You might catch them. But what Yosef says, it's asur only whenever the bird is eating of your hand. But whenever you're throwing it and you're distant away from the animal, no problem. A few months ago, there was one synagogue that they didn't know already what to do with the kids. The kids make so much balaga, nobody can handle, handle them. What they do, the rabbi had a smart idea. He goes and he brings them a chicken. And they put the chicken in the, in the backyard of the synagogue. Everybody, all the kids run around the chicken. <laughs> that was the entertainment. Be <laughs> pool, <laughs> teacher. <laughs> The chicken, the chicken run after them, they run after the chicken, everybody, ah, everybody outside. The people are inside, pray, no problem. <laughs> now, they went inside, grab some cookies from the kiddush, they want to feed the dog, the, the chicken. chicken. Mutar or no? Huh? It's a designated for people, not for animals. Good point. Let's say it is owner, has owner. What if it would not have owner? By himself comes. Yeah. Shalom Bati. For the sake of mitzvah, people are going to pray nice, like the shekel. Do you need to get there? Or just the fact that you pro throw the bread on the floor, the cookies yeah, on the floor? Far enough, that's far it. enough, that's it. You'll be allowed to feed them. And you see the kids, they cut the chicken's head and come inside. Pasigreshi. Pasigreshi. <laughs> Rabbi, that's what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> chicken is not moving. We thought it's moving. Okay. Oh, that Number four. That's what I said. It's like chicken without a head, the right? Honey, honey. He's running like a chicken without a head. The honey, honey. Okay. Next. Number four. Are we allowed to feed a stray dog in general? Since the Gemara says, "Don't feed stray dogs in the city because dogs have a nature of if you give them, if you give to them, they will keep coming back." Here. However, Don't. Я не понял, says, don't feed stray dog in the city because dogs, if you feed them one time, Joe Red Shoday, every single time is gonna come with you. Shalom Aleichem. Every single time is gonna come with you. The dog. And then what? And then you're gonna have a big financial loss. Every time to feed him, to feed him, to feed him, to feed him. I said it's not a good thing to feed the dogs. So that people pay money to feed it, to trade it, to treat their dogs. Uh, <laughs> so, but you should know that that's not the... The, uh, treating, dog, treating dog the, is not going to go anywhere. The, uh, what do you mean treating dog is not going to go anywhere? What do you mean? Treating dog? No, if you feed the dog, the man said he's going to follow you, that's it. He's going to make you every time give him food and more and more. Right. That's, that's what they say. That's the image. Yeah. Continuing. However, Sakino, read. However, Ravadia says. Uh, nowadays, 
there are cats everywhere, the soft bones won't be mukteh. Ah. So nowadays also the soft bones are not mukteh. Okay, number five. Let's get number five and we go to, go to the Zohar. Apples. Apples that fell on Shabbat, or if a goy picked them, or he hunted on Shabbat and brought them to you, is it mukteh? Why is it mukteh if it is fit for an animal? Yeah, so apples that fell on Shabbat are mukta or no? Yeah. Yes. Why? It's it, it fell by itself. I didn't do anything to it. From the tree, not from the place. Chudash ba chudash, chal tidak. So what's the problem? Huh? Yablaka. Siv. Rosh Hashanah um zodeh. It fell by itself. You have to say ba'asad Maybe you want to go. Why? Because whenever Shabbat or Rosh Hashanah Yom Tov came in, it was attached to the tree. Maybe and whenever a, no, the wind blew on it, it was Shabbat. So when Shabbat came in, it was Mukte. It was attached to the tree. After it fell, it remains Mukte. What if you don't know if it was on the tree? Oh, if you don't know, Safik Davar Sheyesh Lo Matirim Afilu Be'elef you're not allowed because you have a way out to wait until after the holiday. It's the same thing with the eggs then. Exactly, eggs that we have suffered when it was late. Exactly. Okay, continuing. Fruits picked or given by a goy or mukte because the person didn't want to designate it for the, for the animal. He wanted it for himself. <clears throat> if one wanted to designate it for their pet, it is not mukte for that person. Yeah. So what if a goy get brought to you uh, uh, fruits? Nami. There was one guy just moved into his yeah. house. His neighbor said, "Welcome to us." And he goes to his backyard and he picks through from few of his fruits that he has three fruits over there. Oh. He picks up, boy, may you dig. He picks up <laughs> and brings it to you. It was not Shabbat, regular day. Oh, regular. Let's say the same idea will happen Shabbat. You come into your house, the neighbor says, "Welcome to our neighborhood." And he's going to greet you nicely. He takes the fu- fruits on Shabbat, mate. Chach, chach. Cuts it and brings it to you. I didn't say nothing to him. Or Can you eat it or no? Or low or not. Huh? Or low or not. Or low. Or low? No. In Chutz La'ar, it's safek. Or low, mutar. So it's no question of or low. Question is, he detached it. Be Shabbat. I didn't tell him. Klum. Say, Zalach HaAsur. We love the Shabbat, no? Not allowed. After Shabbat, you can have this fruit. But on Shabbat, as to why? I didn't tell him nothing. He did it for himself. In order to give me kavod. What's the reason it's not allowed? Because when Shabbat came in, it was attached to the tree. Even if the wind will blow it out, it's still mukte. So because you cannot eat it, the, the God boy cannot eat it either. Exactly. So no, because you can eat, I, can I, I eat cannot eat. Go I could eat it. I'm saying go I cannot do it for you either. Go I cannot do because it. Because I cannot add water to the hot water urn, so go I cannot do it for me either. Right. Cook. Go I cannot cook for you. Same thing. You cannot cook Same for yourself. Process. Go I cannot cook for you also. But here there is another reason. Dear, even if the goy would be allowed to do it for you specifically, but because the item was attached to the tree, it remained mukt throughout the whole Shabbat. <coughs> you understand? <coughs> Got it? Okay, we stop at number five. We almost did 25 pages, maybe. Maybe what about Nivela? Almost put no pages on the top. The Nivela question. What about it? Why the <coughs> animal was alive, it was a uh, and now it died on Shabbat, you're allowed to move it. And and, and, fru- and fruits that fell on Shabbat, you're not allowed to. But Nivela, you're allowed to go Nivela, is that a book? So is apple uh, edible to everybody? To other animals. So good question. Yeah, you can send me, the, send me that question. Good question. I have to, I'll look into it. Okay, where is the Zohar? Yes, Shabbat. The Zohar is the hidden part of the Torah. Is hiding from our eyes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Remember this Akino? Yonah, the Navi, the prophet, was running away from Hashem's mission. Hashem told him, you have a mission, go to Ninveh, tell them, no, they're not going to do tshuva, I'm going to flip all the whole Ninveh. You're not running away from them. Says the Zohar Kadosh, Yonah is a nickname to your Neshama Meir. When Meir came down, came down to this world, Hashem gave to every hour Neshamot, mission. And yet Sarara makes the uh, Neshama, Run away from the mission. It says, whenever Yonah was inside the boat, what what Hashem did? Inside the boat, what Hashem did? Se'ara. Remember, Hashem made a storm. It says, the same thing happens in a person's life. When a person is supposed to have one mission in this, in this world, to realize Hashem, and he runs away from this mission, what a Kadosh Bahu does in his life? Making a storm. In, in Russian, how do you say storm? Storm. storm. Tofon. Uragan. Uragan. Storm. You make, Hashem makes a uragan, storm in a person's life. Suddenly his wife is upset about him. She says, listen, I don't feel like it with you anymore. I think I, I, I'm not going to continue living with you. Suddenly his parnasa doesn't go the right way. Suddenly his children says, Abba, you're not my father anymore. I'm tired of you. <laughs> He doesn't know what's going on with him or with his life. Hashem Yerachem problem. Suddenly the neighbors are suing him for something he never did. Suddenly the IRS, why, 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 Habibi, that's it. Nafal alav. Nafal alav akeli. Suddenly the Balabai tells you, listen, in one month you're going to have to find a different job. Storm. Balagan b'chaim. It says the Zohar, what's the reason Hashem made this Balagan to you, now? To wake up. It says, after Yonah hears that there's a problem, what does he do? He gets another shot to go sleep. I'm going to sleep. Says the Zohar, that's what exactly the Yetzirah comes to tell you. Listen, you have so much problems. The neighbor is after you. The IRS is not trying to get you. Your wife is this. You need a vacation. And you go to vacation into more materialistic things, running more from your mission. And then it says, until the Capitan comes. Who is the Capitan? It's a Rato. The Capitan comes to Yonah Navi. What was the cap captain tells to Yonah over there? He asked him a few questions. Listen to the questions he told him. Says the Zohar, <laughs> Says the Zohar, ah, First question is, First question asked him, First question asked him, Whenever the captain asked Yonah, What was the first question in the conversation? Do you know? What is your job? Says the Zohar, Bema asakta ba'olam titvade alehim lifne koncha. It says the question that the captain asked Yonah, it's not a storyteller. We don't need to know this question if it doesn't do anything with our life. What is the question that the captain asked Yonah has to do with our life? Says the Zohar Kadosh, you know what he has to do with your life, George? Ma'amelachtecha is what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing with your life? Are you wasting your life on Ruski Canal? Tell it in Doma? Sure, what's there to do? Piridacha, ah, Rabbi, there's a Piridacha. Nimagu. Some people mean Shaharit, Minha, read Piridacha. Shiu Torah, Piridacha. Tena novela. Soap opera. Tam Kakota Piridacha, Ya Nimagu. You sitting, Babu, you see, Babu, you're sitting this, the watching TV. There is a, how do you call it, the soap opera? They see the cry with them. They laugh when they laugh. They, they jump when they jump. Wow, oh, they laugh. They laugh. Mama slaves to the tele to, to, to the TV. So much time being wasted, says the captain, which is Yetzirato. What are you doing with your life? Make a Kadosh Barhur forgive you for the mistakes you are doing. Second question was, the captain asked him, 
Where are you coming from? Adushanbe, Asamarkan, a Queens. Where you come from? It says that's the question the Yetzer Atov wants to make us remember. You right now want to argue with this wife? You right now want to argue with this neighbor? Remind yourself. Who am I, Babshe? Who am I? I'm a stinky drop. May you hear what you are? And what am I? And what he is? And what we all are? Stinky drop. May you know what stinky drop means? The Zeha of the father that made you, it was stinky drop. So it got amplified to six feet. But that's what we are. Damai Bata! It says, by you reminding yourself that you are no one in this world, does it work for you to argue with this wife, suing this neighbor, ripping apart this person? Is it worth for you to do these things? If you remind yourself that you are no one, that your life is going to pass like this. Third question is asked, the captain asked the Yonah, Ma Artecha? Where are you heading to? Where are you going? You come to the boat. Everybody come on the boat. But what's the destination you're going to go off this boat? It says, what's that have to do with our lives? It's what's the destination of your body made? Where are you going to go with your body? What do you think? To the grave. Six feet under. Istakel, he says, You came from the ground and you are going back. Badurni hawk inside the hawk, inside the ground. That's why Mary have to make the shura on all the mistakes you have done before. As I always tell you, let's cover ground before ground. Don't say about me, I have time. I, yesterday, a few, few, few weeks ago, I found out one guy doesn't talk to his brother 15 years. May you believe that? Yes. Now, if those people will remind themselves that they're gonna all any second can die, and that it's gonna die with a brother that they hate. The natural. These negative feelings, it's put so much pressure on them, they get cancer right away, they get problems right away in their life. What's the last question he asked him? And from what nation you are? I said, the person should ask her, ask Hashem, Hashem, I don't have a lot of zakhuyot, but I'm coming from a nation. That has my forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. If you have a forefather that is closer to you, your bobo, your prabobo, your grandpa, your great grandpa. So, I mean, next time you're going, to be, you're going to pray to Hashem for getting success in your life, what are you going to say? In who's the hood? Of your grandfather, father, as a hood. Of your great grandfather, as a hood. Don't ever say, Hashem, the other day I did a tzala call, I saved his life. Please, Hashem, save my life. Don't remember the good things that you have done. Always ask Hashem to give your the zahut for the prayer to be answered. For the zahut of your father, mother, grandfather, grandmother. As early you can find to your generation, the better. But they use the zahut themselves. No, they have a lot. That's, uh, when you go to Olam Abai, it gets a uh, ribit. You know what ribit is? Interest. You got it becomes bigger and bigger. Dividends. So you are their grandchild, your great 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 child. So you can use it. Yeah. If the word tzadikim, you can use the zechut. That's as Allah says. Did boneni mishlech hazechut avot shetagen alecha. Look into your zechut avot that can protect you. Ki beet adin omrim laadam ave zechut veipater. It says when a person has so a different type of problems in his life, he needs zechut to buy off. It's like a bailout. You know, a person that can all in will end up in jail. What they tell? Bail him out. What's the bill out in the mitzvah and the in the in the spirituality? That's why you have Marriage. connection. The connection. All your neshama connection. So he got, got credit card right. from the from the grandfather. grandfather. From so the great grandfather. From whoever was a tzaddik or tzaddika in your family, and that's the only way he says you should pray whenever you are praying, whenever you have problems, whenever somebody is after you, the government, authority, whatever it is, you want to be saved out of them. He says, don't pray. Don't even feel in your heart. 
I came to Nets Minyan, I did Tikkun Chatzot, I give tzedakot, I went to mikveh today. Oh, Hashem has to answer me. I went to mikveh today. Sometimes because you went to the mikveh, Hashem will not answer you. You know why? Because whenever you did something extra and you are feeling that now you deserve, Hashem says, you think you deserve? I don't want to give you anything. When a person doesn't go to the mikveh sometimes, he scoffs, Hashem, the mikveh, I don't deserve. Hashem says, you don't deserve? So we said, I'll do chesed with you because you understand that you don't deserve. So a person has to always remember to keep his ga'ava as lower as possible. The moment your ga'ava is high, has a shalom, your head is off. That's what always the more ga'ava is down, the more you're going to remain successful, happy, and Bezat Hashem for many more years to come. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. Amen.